This meeting is being recorded. Hello. Welcome, everyone. I'm uh, Scott Smelter with United Consulting, and I want to thank you for joining another uh, United Consulting webinar. Uh, today, we have some great speakers. Uh, John Morehouse uh, is the Director of Manufacturing at um, the well, Director of Manufacturing at Kennesaw State um, now at the Center for Excellence. And Dr. Amin Esmali is the director at the Kennesaw State Industrial Assessment Center. They will be our speakers today. We're, we're really glad to have them. And uh, I'll turn it over to them. But before I turn it over to them, uh, Tim Eccles is our, our always our longtime host. And he is at a huge, huge opening down in Savannah. So Tim, I'll let you uh, talk about where you are. Yeah, behind me, uh, if you guys can, can you hear me okay, Scott? Uh, yes. Yeah, behind me is the in-market arena floor. You can see some Hyundai electric vehicles uh, back there. This is a massive celebration of Hyundai's uh, a plant that they're building just about 30 minutes uh, west of here. I've just come from the plant site. It was the largest temporary building I've ever seen in my life uh, for this celebration. It's getting noisy, so I will quickly uh, mute. But it is the largest economic development project in the history of the state of Georgia. And we've got two of the guys that work uh, you know, closely with Georgia Economic Development, obviously on the call today. We're talking about energy and innovation. And as the governor said from the floor of the event today, that cheap energy prices, reliability uh, is so important, not just electricity, but natural gas, because this plant's going to have natural gas, obviously. Uh, it's just such an important part of what we do. So we're privileged to have uh, both of these guys here. John, uh, John Morehouse, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Thanks very much, Tim, and uh, thanks again for having us today. Um, let's see here. I'm going to share my screen. All right. All right. So can everybody see that? Yes. All right. That's coming up. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So very excited to be here today to talk about this topic. Um, my name is John Morehouse, and I'm the Director of Manufacturing at the Georgia Center of Innovation, and we are part of the Georgia Department of Economic Development. And today, we're going to be talking about energy-saving opportunities for Georgia manufacturers. Um, before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about what Tim alluded to in the opening, which is how well Georgia has been doing in terms of uh, building out its economy. Uh, we have been ranked the number one state for business now for nine years in a row. Uh, an announcement at the end of September gave us that, that crown. Um, we're very excited about that. And the reason for last year in fiscal 22, uh, which ended at the end of June, um, we had nearly $21.2 billion in new investments in the state. Um, and that's a 94% increase over FY 2021 and over 51,000 jobs created across the state. So that beat our previous record by 53%. Now, if you exclude the two biggest economic development projects in Georgia's history, Rivian and Hyundai, uh, we still had nearly 10.7 billion in new investments and over 35,000 jobs created in the state. And so we're very proud of that here in Georgia. And, and there's many reasons for why we're a great state for business. Um, we hear a lot about workforce, we hear about uh, logistics, we hear about our pro-business environment. Um, and, and those are things that companies repeatedly say after they've been here, they've expanded here, their reasons for doing business in Georgia. Uh, and here at the Georgia Department of Economic Development, we like to think that another important element is this continuity of care that we try to offer to support business growth in the state. So if you look at the, these are all divisions here on the left side of the Georgia Department of Economic Development. 
And if you look at the blue text, those are our two divisions, global commerce and international relations that are focused on helping companies from other places move to Georgia, you know, site selection, looking at tax incentives, uh, you know, connecting with utilities, the environmental protection division, et cetera. Um, and so they're the ones that really help to bring companies here. Uh, in green, we've got our tourism division, Georgia Council for the Arts, um, our film, music, and digital entertainment division. Those are the things that I like to think of, of you know, what really helped to make Georgia a great place to live. Um, and then finally, down here in the orange, we've got our marketing and communications division, international trade, rural Georgia initiatives, and then my center, what I'm part of, the Georgia Center of Innovation. These are all resources in the state that are focused at, you know, focused on who's here and how do we help them grow, you know, once they've gotten here. So zooming in on the center of innovation, we have six teams aligned with strategic industries here in the state. We have a team focused on agricultural technology, aerospace, energy technology, information technology, logistics, and then my team manufacturing. And we're a unique program here in the US. Um, there's really none other like us. And a big part of the reason for that, I think, is that all of our teams are staffed with people that have had significant experience in these industries. So for example, me, I started off life as a mechanical engineer and got kind of thrown into a manufacturing role actually as my first job. And then um, I've been in uh, manufacturing related roles ever since. Um, and so all of us will go in, we'll meet with the company and try to assess their issues, whatever challenges they're having. Um, and then we use our industry backgrounds to really kind of advise them on potential next steps and then connect them to the right resources in the state to help them overcome their challenges and grow. So zooming in on my team, the manufacturing team, our mission, we're here to help grow Georgia's manufacturing industry, and we're helping existing companies in the state, whether that's an entrepreneur with a new product idea or a large company, and you know, assessing their challenges and helping them innovate their products, processes, and workforce. So, you know, two ways we really interact with our industry. The first is working with individual manufacturers. Um, and so an example of that would be a recent project that I completed with Rainier Advanced Materials in Jessup, Georgia, um, pulp and paper manufacturer. They were looking at uh, a waste stream and they realized that they could take a byproduct of that waste stream, potentially convert it into a prebiotic that could be added to chicken feed um, and then sell that. So they had this idea and we connected them with a team of researchers in the poultry sciences uh, division at the University of Georgia. And Rainier kind of created some sample uh, versions of this prebiotic material sent it to the University of Georgia. They did some feeding studies with chickens and were able to show that um, there, you know, there were no detrimental health effects. And actually the birds um, grew to larger weights and they were healthier along the way. So the end result of this project is that Rainier gets to reduce the size of its waste stream. So there's an environmental benefit. In addition, they get to create a new product that they can now sell and add to their top line revenue. Um, so that's just kind of one example to show you how we work with individual manufacturers. The second way we work, and, and this is kind of part of why we're here today, in my view, is that we work to strengthen the manufacturing and ecosystem here in the state. So what is the manufacturing ecosystem? Well, the way I like to think of it is it's the manufacturers and all of the resources that support those manufacturers throughout the state. Um, that makes up the whole ecosystem. And so, um, you know, y'all are familiar with what manufacturers are, but in terms of resources, we can consider the Georgia Tech Manufacturing Institute, um, Georgia Manufacturing Extension Partnership, uh, what we're here to talk about today, the KSU Industrial Assessment Center. Those are resources that manufacturers can use to become more profitable uh, you know, save money um, and grow here in the state. So 
that's what we're here to talk about today is really kind of an ecosystem type project. Um, all right, so real quickly, Georgia's manufacturing industry, we've got over 11,000 manufacturing establishments, uh, 407,000 employees, which is about 9% of the state's workforce. Uh, and about half of those are production workers. Um, our manufacturing total output in 2021 was 64.9 billion. Interestingly, you know, folks across the nation may not think of Georgia as a manufacturing state, but in terms of output, we actually ranked 11th in the United States in 2021. So we're right there in the top 20%. Um, and our output in manufacturing is about 10% of our GDP here in Georgia, and it's a growing industry. So output has increased about 36% between 2011 and 2021. So some pretty exciting things going on here in the industry. Um, so this is how it's broken down in terms of subsectors. If you look at number of, point of employees in uh, the manufacturing subsectors, uh, food and beverage is dominant. So over 65,000 workers in this industry um, and half of those roughly are poultry processing. And then the other half is beverage and then bakeries, tortilla manufacturers, et cetera. Um, that's followed by textile furnishing mills, plastic products supply a lot of our Georgia manufacturers and other companies across the nation, uh, aerospace, and then motor vehicles round out the top five. Um, and then you can see kind of the remaining 10 here. Um, but so today, that's kind of a snapshot of Georgia's manufacturing industry. Today, while we're here is to talk about energy consumption. So if you look at energy consumption in manufacturing in the United States, um, we can dig in. This is a pie graph that's put out by the US Energy Information Administration. And it shows you how energy is consumed in the US. So about 18% of it goes to commercial uses, 21% residential, 28% transportation, and then 33% industrial. Now, this industrial category is made up of, you can see here, manufacturing, mining, construction, and agriculture. And out of those four, manufacturing uses about 81% of that energy in the industrial category. So you do a little simple math and you can find out that manufacturers in the United States use about 26.7% of our total energy. So roughly a quarter of the energy in the US goes to power manufacturing. So great opportunity there, right? To reduce energy footprint. Um, now, the good news is that manufacturers have actually become much more efficient over time. So this graph shows um, uh, essentially what you see there is the bars represent energy consumption by manufacturers from 1998 to 2018. And that red line at the top represents manufacturing output over the same period. And what's really cool about this to me is you can see that manufacturing output has actually grown by 12%. So great, the industry is growing. But what's really neat is that the energy consumption has actually gone down by 17%. So some pretty significant increases there um, in energy efficiency. Now, here in Georgia, there are resources, and really across the nation, there's a lot of, the reason that's happened, the reason why you know, manufacturers have become more energy efficient is that there's been a lot of attention given to that by manufacturers uh, and by the resources that support them. So here in Georgia, we have an excellent resource that many of you are probably familiar with, the Georgia Manufacturing Extension Partnership. It's run out of Georgia Tech. Um, and they have an energy and sustainability group that's been working with manufacturers for years in helping them reduce their energy usage and save costs. And you can kind of see their, their list of services here on the right. Um, and one thing that, that I wanted to point out, it's kind of a fun fact, is that ISO 50001 is an energy management standard for, for companies. And it was developed, it came out, you know, basically in 2011. And the cool thing was, is that folks from MEP actually helped, quote unquote, write the book on this standard. We had, um, you know, Georgia had 
through its MEP, people that actually got in and helped develop this standard. So very proud of that in the state and they're an excellent resource that I encourage all manufacturers in Georgia to connect with, um, you know, if you haven't already. But what we're here to talk about today is a resource that I recently became aware of through our Center of Innovation for Energy, my partner in, in the energy team, Costa Sigma Blue, um, introduced me to Dr. Asmin, Amin Ismaili, and he's the director of the Georgia Industrial Assessment Center that's run out of Kennesaw State University. And this is a center that offers um, you know, free energy assessments for uh, small, medium businesses across the state. And I'm gonna introduce Amin and then let him tell you how they work. And hopefully you'll see some opportunities to work with them and, and reduce your own costs. So since 2021, Amin has led the GOIAC team three faculty members, 12 students, and conducting the energy productivity and sustainability assessments for small, medium-sized businesses across Georgia. Uh, Amin joined KSU with many years of experience in the utility-sponsored energy efficiency programs and measurement and verification projects. And as a former engineering product manager at Franklin Energy, one of the leading administrators of utilities demand-side management programs, Dr. Ismaili and his team designed more than 20 energy efficiency and grid optimization portfolios for electric and gas utilities across the country. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Ismaili to take it from here. Thank you, John. Um, um, hello, everyone. So this is Amin Ismaili. And I'm the director of uh, Georgia Industrial Assessment Center. And it's main center at Kennesaw State University. Um, so uh, if you can go to the next slide, I, I can introduce the center um, a little more first, and then we can go through detail of it and talk about different aspects that we can help uh, manufacturing institute in the state of Georgia. Uh, so this is a center um, funded by U.S. Department of Energy, Office of Advanced Manufacturing and Industrial Decarbonization Office at um, Department of Energy. Uh, so we received funding in 2021, and uh, our main objective is to provide no cost. We call it no cost. We don't like to say free energy, but it's a no cost to the manufacturer. So we charge all of the cost of the Department of Energy. So it's called um, Energy Productivity and Sustainability Assessment for a specific part of the manufacturing sector, which is the small and medium-sized industrial facilities across the state of Georgia. Uh, in the contract that we have, uh, we joined with Clark Atlanta University in downtown Atlanta and South Space Institute um, that many of you know about them, nonprofit organization over here at uh, Atlanta. Um, and we joined together and we have this project for the next five years to help local, actually next four years, it just started in 2021, um, to um, help local manufacturing. Next slide, please, so I can. Um, John? Okay, great. Um, so I talked about that, the, our scope of the work and the portion of the market that we are uh, providing this service, this no cost assessment, is a small and medium sized manufacturer. Uh, based on the um, eligibility criteria that we have for uh, performing this type of assessment, um, the facilities in Georgia um, that has uh, SIC code between 20 and 39, which means there are manufacturers uh, and they have a utility bill, electric, gas, water, waste uh, between 100,000 and three and a half million annually. And the annual sales and revenue of less than $100 million, they are eligible to receive this service. Um, and all of the costs would be uh, charged to the Department of Energy. Um, I have a box at the bottom of these slides that I included my email address. And there is a reason for that because we always can go and for special cases request for waiver. If uh, your facility, or if you know any facility that uh, maybe one of these criteria um, needs to be the requirement of it waive, we can go always and go um, request for that waiver. So I included my email address in case that 
uh, you are interested to receive this service and just one or two of these uh, criteria are not met. Um, so can we go to the next one? Okay. Um, now in this program, and I want to describe what we do for the local manufacturers at uh, the state of Georgia. So first of all, as I mentioned, um, the team of uh, Georgia Industrial Assessment Center consists of faculty and students, all of them from engineering department at Kennesaw State University, Clark Atlanta and South Space Institute Energy Engineers. Uh, the goal over here is we have twofold uh, scope and goal and objective in our center. First of all, we are a university setting, so we need to train the next generation of energy engineers. Uh, that's one of our main goals. We train the students how they can perform energy assessment, uh, productivity assessment, lean production, lean manufacturing assessment for the facilities. And then the other fold of it, which is the reason that uh, I'm here and we try to uh, help region, regional uh, industries and manufacturers to become more energy efficient, smart, resilient, and sustainable. These two goals of the center um, is um, the goal of the, these two are the goal of the center that we are trying to achieve. And um, with our team since 2021, we have started to um, find outreach and find manufacturers who are interested to receive this service. Next slide, please. Um, over here, uh, to just describe the scope of the work and how we perform this type of assessment, um, so first of all, this is a one day visit and site visit that uh, the team um, scheduled that and they visit each of the sites for a small and medium sized manufacturer. We, there are two reasons for that again. First of all, for the, for the students to learn about manufacturing processes, to become um, more aware of what are the different type of manufacturing processes uh, for different industries. And the second part of it is to uh, collect data, especially the energy information and energy data that you can collect from the different equipment, different energy system that you have in your facility. And then we will use that to uh, work on a report that we call it assessment report. These assessment report, uh, we write it and then we will deliver it to the manufacturer. We provide over there uh, different opportunities that we find during that one day visit, that you can actually go and implement that and reduce your energy consumption, your energy costs, your carbon footprint. Uh, it's based on uh, what are the different aspects of this program you want to go forward. So we will provide this report at the 60 day period after the 60 days after the visit that we have, you will have the report with all of the detail of what you can do to reduce your energy consumption. Next slide, please. Um, these are the, by the way, this program is part of a larger national uh, program across the country. There are 37 universities right now that have these type of centers. And these are local, each of them serve uh, 150 miles around each of the campuses. Uh, based on the previous information over there uh, with the other center, right, uh, in the previous years, about 6% uh, annual saving opportunities were uh, saving opportunities were identified when uh, the team of industrial assessment center visited the facility. And then uh, we have a process that one year after um, the day of the audit, we go over there and ask you that how many of those recommendations you have implemented. And based on the database that we have about $50,000 uh, of those identified uh, $130,000 annual saving is actually getting implemented. That's a uh, very key metrics in the performance of industrial assessment center across the country. Uh, I brought over here three examples of it uh, because of different manufacturing processes, because of different characteristics of different entities and facilities, we expect different uh, amount of energy saving that we can identify in each of the facilities. And um, over here, the three examples, you can see that for one example of it, it was a motor vehicle part manufacturer. We went over there, we found about 10% opportunities for 
energy reduction. And then also uh, we always uh, check to see if there is opportunity for electricity generation, PV, solar PV uh, generation, or maybe combined heat and power. Over there in the first facility, we saw that there is opportunity for that and it can actually cover about 55% of, actually 45, because 10% of it was saving. So about 45% of the consumption of the facility uh, can be generated on site. For the second facility, it was a textile manufacturer. We again find about 8% reduction opportunities on their energy cost. And then with the implementation of the combined heat and power CHP system, micro turbine, uh, they could generate actually uh, another 10% of their consumption over there. And then uh, another example of it was a commercial bakery, about 6% reduction and about 4% um, solar generation. This was because they were mostly the gas heating um, energy um, facility. So because of that, you see, each of these type of facility, they have different characteristics. And then during the one day assessment, during the data collection, before the assessment or after assessment, we figured out, we uh, kind of characterize it for the facility that how much of saving they can expect from each of these improvements. And then if you are interested, we can translate that to the carbon footprint reduction and other metrics that I know many of the facilities uh, nowadays are trying to quantify and uh, come up with the strategies for that. Next slide, please. Um, so over here, I uh, created few, I brought few of the plot that uh, Advanced Manufacturing Office based on um, Energy Information Administration Survey. Uh, that performed in 2018. They have it just to uh, show you the magnitude of the uh, industrial energy consumption. Um, over here, you can see that so this is the total input about 19,000 uh, trillion BTU that uh, actually industrial facilities are using. We call it primary energy that go to the offsite generation, electricity got generated or steam generated. It goes to the facility. We also have on-site generation for electricity and steam. Uh, this is excluding the renewable and solar, the information that they have in 2018. And you see that what with those red arrows, you see the amount of losses throughout this process that um, we will have that. And then all of that goes to the process and non-process energy. There are losses in the process as you all know. And if we want to just talk about the on-site energy part of it, next slide, please. Um, so it has more detail on it where actually that amount of energy is going uh, to be consumed. Uh, over here, uh, we can see that from that 19,000 uh, trillion BTU, about 14,000 of it come to the on-site, the rest of it are getting, are getting wasted before getting there. Then over there, we will have the on-site energy, we will have the process energy, and you can see the main sources of the energy over there based on the information is the process heating. Compressed air system is, has a large section of it. We have the combined and co-generation um, opportunities that we will discuss. So if there is a need for boiler, there is opportunity for co-generation of heat, uh, steam, and then electricity in each of these facilities. And I will talk that in the next slide. Over here, it will give you the, um, a good snapshot of where all of those energy are processed. Go to the manufacturing facility and how they are uh, getting consumed. Um, so with all of this, um, so we define our scope of the work in a way that we can um, find opportunities for the facilities based on these different groups. Uh, I know that there is a, right now at this moment, there is a um, proposal and request for uh, funding announcement by the Department of Energy at Mass Manufacturing Office about process heating. And they are trying to actually electrify the process heating and then generate it with renewable energy. As you can see over there about 7,000 out of the 14,000, about 50% of um, total energy that goes into the manufacturing facility goes to the process heating. 
that's one big area that if there is a uh, technology advancement and if there is opportunity for reduction, that that's the area that all of the facility need to focus on that. There are other areas that we can right now with the technology that we have, with the opportunities that we have, we can reduce the energy consumption of that. And I'm going to I brought a few examples of it that we saw in the other facilities. Probably it's uh, applicable to many of the other manufacturing sites, and we can go and audit that and assess that and tell you the magnitude of saving that you can get from each of them. Next slide, please. Uh, so from here, uh, in the next five or six slides, I will go through detail of, um, not detail, just a snapshot of what we can do for you in the facilities. One of the main source of energy consumption in many of the facilities, the compressors, uh, compressed air leaks that happens in the lines and valves across the facilities. So we can perform a complete air leak survey for you. Uh, in your facilities, we usually find lots of uh, saving opportunities there. It's a very cost-effective type of uh, energy consumption reduction. We come to your facility, one of in almost all of the facilities that we went, we perform this leak detection survey, and we tell you exactly where are the leaks in your lines, and then um, we calculate the amount of potential saving if you fix that. Um, this is an ongoing activity. So we do it once for you, but when you see the exact the magnitude of it, um, we hope that you provide a uh, maintenance type of preventive maintenance uh, for this type of leak to reduce that consumption in the compressed air system. Next slide, please. Um, the other things that we always look is the insulation. Insulation is a great opportunities in many of the facilities that we went, we noticed that uh, there are opportunities there um, because are corrupt and you want to renew that, we can come up with the cost estimate of that and we can tell you what is the payback period for insulation, which is a very easy fix, usually very um, low payback period. It means that in less than a year, you will have uh, the cost of it covered. Next slide, please. Sorry, I mean, this is... Uh having trouble advancing for some reason. Oh. Give me a minute. Sure. Okay, great. There we go. Perfect. Um, so the other things that we usually look at, uh, the things that I'm bringing up over here, these are the easy low hanging fruit one and we get later to the uh, larger project that you can do. Uh, combustion efficiency measurement, we come over there, we measure that usually in all of the facilities where that we check there are excess air in their uh, flue gas. It means that with the adjustment of the air and gas uh, over there in your burner, you can reach to amount of saving on the gas consumption. Next slide, please. Um, so I want to get uh, to the more um, high investment type of um, recommendation that we usually assets in your facilities. Uh, this is one example of it. Uh, in many cases, uh, there is opportunities for weed water uh, waste heat recovery. One example of it, we check to see if there is opportunities uh, for you to use the waste heat to preheat the water in your boiler as an example. Or if we see any other opportunities that we can uh, design a system for you so that waste heat that you have in your processes can be used somehow in the process. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is the one, this one and the next two slides are the one that I want to talk about that um, in more detail. Uh, one of the opportunities that the Department of Energy is promoting and asks us to promote to our, all of the manufacturers is this uh, combined heat and power opportunities of cogeneration. 
based on the analysis, and you can see it over here in the slides, I brought that from our sister program in North Carolina, that they have a CHP program and they can provide more information. We can do the pre-screening, they can provide more information to you later. Uh, so the example that they have over here, so assume that you have it, you need a 30 units of electricity and 45 units of heat. We just uh, assume that those units of energy are equivalent, so we can change that to kilowatt hour or MMBTU, but just to be consistent, assume that you have a need for 75 units of energy in facility. Currently, in many facilities, they use the, they purchase the electricity, so it means that 94 units of energy is actually used to generate that 30 units of electricity because of the loss in the generation, because of loss in the transmission. Uh, 94 units of energy is used to generate 30 units of electricity. In the other hand, if you need uh, heat for the processes, as an example, if you have a boiler and you generate the steam, uh, you need 56 units of energy with 80% efficiency of the unit to generate 45 units of steam that you need, as an example. The benefits of cogeneration and uh, combined heat and power over here is that with 100 units instead of 150 units of electricity and uh, fuel for the boiler, with 100 units uh, on site generation with a CHP unit with 75% efficiency, you actually can generate that. That's about 33% uh, reduction on the amount of uh, energy that your facility is consuming from the source energy that you have. Uh, we test that for different facilities, textile facility especially is the perfect situation because in many cases they use a steam. Any facility that uses steam is a perfect uh, situation for the state of Georgia to use this marker turbine and CHP and have an on-site generation. It will reduce greenhouse gas emission uh, with the current mix of fuel on the grid that we have. It depends on, um, there are discussion about that, that maybe in future years, that's not, uh, that might not be this amount of greenhouse gas emission, but it's still, it's a really good opportunity that the Department of Energy is actually promoting for many of the manufacturers across the country. Next slide, please. Uh, the other opportunity is uh, if you have any old motor, uh, a standard efficiency motor that uh, you have in the, your facilities, this is also another uh, high, in, I, I shouldn't say high investment, but it needs investment that you go and uh, prepare the inventory of the motors and then uh, assume how much of efficiency gain you can get with the uh, improvement of the old motor to a new premium, uh, NEMA premium efficiency motors. Next slide, please. And um, this is the last slide before I get to the final slide of my presentation. And this is about solar panel um, systems and installing that for the local manufacturers. Uh, the case is that based on the reduction on the cost of the solar in recent years, it become cost effective opportunity for many of the facilities. And um, right now, actually, as I mentioned before, they are actually trying to generate the electricity with solar and then use that for the process heating, they call it. And that's the very ongoing discussion at the Department of Energy. Uh, we also can perform an assessment for you to see how much of a saving you can expect, what is the payback period for your facility and what are the opportunities for um, maybe rebate or grant across the country. And that's the, the topic of next slide that I want to bring up to your attention. Um, based on the next slide, if you can. Okay, great. Um, as you know, in November, 2021, um, the bipartisan infrastructure law passed the Congress and signed. In one element of it, there is a $400 million implementation grant that um, they assigned to the Office of Advanced Manufacturing Office at Department of Energy to help manufacturers implement the recommendation of industrial assessment centers, right? Uh, it's still in the process. I checked it last night, actually, just to make sure that it's still in the process. So they are working on the mechanism of it, how they assign it to the manufacturer. 
it needs to be an application to the Department of Energy. So, um, but one of the requirements of that is having one industrial assessment center to review and see the opportunity. We are type of pre screening for this. And then the amount of grant would be about, a, it will be 50% matching contribution from the Department of Energy up to 300,000. These are the things that we know at this moment. Um, they are going to start at receiving the application by the fourth quarter of 2022. We expect any day these days that they uh, work on that. And as I know, there are there is a third party evaluator that is um, check all of the opportunities and assign the grant in the next few years. Um, this is a good opportunity for those high investment opportunities that we identify as industrial assessment center. Um, like solar panel, like uh, micro turbine, combine heat and power. If we go to a facility and we see the opportunities, we provide that report to you in 60 days after the assessment. And then you can go and apply for this grant. Uh, it requires that you pay about 50% of it, not about more than 50% or more of it. And then up to 300,000 of it come from Department of Energy. It will make it more cost effective. It's easier for energy manager for manufacturing directors of facilities to justify it uh, based on the return of investment of that. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, you can find, if you just search industrial research and assessment implementation grant on the Department of Energy, you will find the page of it. It will go live uh, in the next month or so. And then uh, after that, having an assessment, just if you are eligible for this, um, industrial assessment reports and assessments. Uh, just contact me. I included my email address uh, over here in few part of the presentations. Uh, if you contact me, I will start the process of the industrial assessment and then um, I will decide which one of the facilities. Um, over here, they ask us to go with the facility because also we have a capacity. So we are going to the facilities that we see there is opportunities uh, for improvement. And based on that, we they can go and apply for the grant and the um, Department of Energy will decide about that. That's the second part of it. Uh, I believe this is my last slide. Um, so the entire, as, as a conclusion, uh, we are here to help um, local manufacturing facilities uh, across Georgia. Um, you just need to let me know and I will send you eligibility questionnaire and some other questionnaire. We will go through this process. It's a great opportunity for our students. It's a great opportunity for local manufacturers that we can come over there and perform this service for you. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for the uh, transitions. For some way, reason, halfway through, my arrows stopped working on the keyboard, so I had to go to mouse. Uh, Everything was good. Thank you. <laughs> well, Scott, uh, I'll kind of hand it back to you, but thanks for the opportunity for us to talk. Sure, sure. Well, thank you for the very interesting uh, presentation for, for you both. Um, I encourage everyone out there to send in questions uh, on the chat. There are a couple questions already for you. Uh, John and Amin, uh, the first one, uh, I'm sorry, I can't read the name. My, my screen is small, but uh, there's questions. Any evidence that new automation technologies has reduced or increased or reduced overall energy consumption? So I guess either one of you, maybe, maybe a Dr. Ismali, probably more likely for you. Um. John, do you want to start? I have my answer, but I probably you have more experience about this than with the manufacturing facility. I, I'll be honest and say I have not dug into that. Um, so I'll, I'll sure go for it. I mean, sure. Um, so, yes, that's a really good point of it. Uh, this topic of a smart manufacturing. And actually, one of the other aspects of this assessment that the Department of Energy asked us to look at that is the opportunities for smart manufacturing and see how we can add. Um, so in our team, we have a team of mechatronic and robotic uh, faculties and students that when we go for the assessment, we check for that actually to see if there is opportunity for that. Um, that reduction of the energy consumption per uh, dollar output a big portion of, not big portion of it, but a portion of it is related to the 
robotic and smart manufacturing. So that's a core case statement. How much of it I need to review and down check the results. But I heard about that and I saw a few articles about it that they mentioned that. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, another question. Um, I'm getting a statement from the same person. Um, I think the first name is Govin. Uh, he mentioned in an old study of his, he found the difference in scale size is a big determinant of resilience and to energy price shocks in the meat processing. So he asked, do you find that to be the case in your work and carbon footprint recommendations? So um, it's, it's a, we call it a fuzzy situation. So it's not a zero one resilience. We always try to, um, for sure. That's the case for larger facilities. Um, they, they are more prone to this type of crisis, this type of issues. Uh, but the case is that also for the, the smaller facilities, that would be the same uh, situation. The things that we do and the part that we try to actually, so that part of on-site generation that I talked about that, the part of um, combined heat and power that I talked about that at the end of my presentation, those part is actually one other um, benefit of it is the reduction of the dependencies to the grid. So that's also increase the reliability of the energy. They can perform probably with um, just solar and uh, some combined heat and power if the electricity goes down, if um, there is other issues. So that's the same thing. When we talk about resiliency, we look at that side of it. We try to see what are the dependencies, energy dependencies of the facilities. And based on that, uh, if we can find opportunities to reduce that dependencies, which would be the in, in term of uh, solar generation, in term of micro turbine, any other source of on-site generation, um, that would um, be the benefit that the facilities will get from the assessment. Well, that's great. And and you may have mentioned this, but I had to step out for just a minute. But uh, Dr. Ismaili, how how many of these assessments do you do in a year typically? Um, so we need to do twenty per year. But based on the capacity and all of that, we actually had this discussion uh, with John before about two, three weeks ago. Uh, we can go higher than that at this moment, but 20 is the contracted assessments that we have for the state of Georgia. But we have five years contract, so if we do more, probably we can get the extension uh, faster than before the end of the five years. Um, so we can go up to about 40 assessment per year based on the wow. current capacity that we have. And by the and way, we have, there... we have two centers. We have Kennesaw State and we have Clark Atlanta Center. So Clark Atlanta is also part of the contract. So they have also their capacity over there. Okay, great. Is there a waiting list then? Uh, uh, not at this moment, but I guess that it will be pretty soon. Yeah, no, sure. Well, good. Um, I'm not sure there's any other questions. Maybe one more question just popped up. Um, and that was from Kelly. Please remind me what is the definition of medium sized company in regards to being able to provide your service? So, sure. It's a, a small and medium size. So they are grouped together in our contract. Uh, it's 100,000 to 3.5 million of utility bill per year. So it means that one of the things that we do, we ask your 12 months of utility bills on all of the meter that you have. And then if it's less than three and a half million per year, you are eligible in most cases. And then the annual revenue of less than hundred million. For that one, we can um, talk with the Department of Energy and you know, get wavier for that because different type of industries, we had example that it's actually a medium sized facility with larger revenue. So, um, it's less than 100 million and between uh, 100 million revenue and between 100,000 and three and a half million utility bills is the main criteria almost. Okay, thank you. There's another one from Mike Machine. Now I can read my screen. In addition to solar, what is the interest in battery storage and EV chargers? Um, 
at this moment, because we are, um, we try to provide the opportunities that are most cost effective in terms of solar. Uh, we do not include the battery storage at this moment, especially that the cost in the facilities that we went to, demand cost is not that high. So the opportunities for shift loading and all of that is not that good. At least we didn't see that it's a comparable to the other recommendation that we have. Um, but that's also another area that we check. It depends on the different area, different regions of uh, state. If there is a high demand cost, peak demand cost, that we can include that and reduce that peak demand cost with battery storage. Uh, we will look at that and we check that for you in your report. But based on my experience, um, usually we go with solar without the battery. That's the most cost effective at this stage. Oh, great. Well, that's that's it for now. For the questions, um, we do United Consulting does have a drawing, and um, we'd like to award some Cheesecake Factory gift cards to the three winners, and I'll announce them that they are Caesar Frito, uh, Mike Ramos and Roderick Tumlin. And Jody will uh, email you those gift cards uh, shortly after this presentation. So um, with that, um, I think we're, we're done. And it, once again, I'd like to thank our speakers, John Morehouse and Amina Smiley for joining us. Uh, very enlightening and hope to have you back here with us maybe next year to see how, how we've been doing. <laughs> So great. Thank you thank much you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for all who attended. Hope to see you again here soon.